Nima Dikazela Mandela had a conversation with the media. Let's take a look. Mama, let's start on a lighter note. Who is Mama Winnie Mandela? We've seen the story of this wonderful woman, a leader, a mother. How would you describe yourself? No, Sophie, you are unfair. <laughs> How on earth does one describe oneself? No, I... I leave that uh, to to my people to describe me. I, I've never been that vain. In fact, you know that over the years I've told you over and over again that uh, it has never been about me, the person. I've never regarded myself as an individual. I'm just part of this whole liberation machine. I've never been an individual. So I can't describe myself outside of the collective. I belong to the collective, the African National Congress um, prides itself in the collectivity of the leadership of the ANC. And uh, I, I have never been in a position to say I. I always talk about us as we, because I'm just part of the whole collective. Mm -hmm. And maybe in my 20 years down the line, we are marking uh, 20 years of our democracy. That mission for liberation, how would you describe it? Where are we? Is the way you dreamed we would be when you joined this mission to liberate South Africa? Well, I would be extremely naive if I suggested to you that uh, South Africa of today um, is exactly what we dreamt of when we gave up our lives uh, for the um, liberation of our people. Uh, it is no secret uh, about the fact that we have problems. Uh, they, they are visible. Uh, we have extreme challenges uh, which we didn't have at the beginning. You cannot compare the first dispensation with what is happening uh, today. Originally, yes, we, it looked like we were going to achieve our beautiful dream. Yes, we were a miracle from the uh, violence of the past. That particular part of the transition to a new democratic South Africa was wonderful. We achieved that. But uh, in the process of doing so, um, there was naivety on our part. We were not experienced. We didn't know that uh, a political freedom was very easy. Um, but political freedom without economic freedom is uh, what has resulted in the challenges we face today. We did not accommodate that particular problem sufficiently because of our vicious past. Uh, we come from a very brutal period of our history, a, a history of a country that was segregated constitutionally. And it was in black and white. Society was divided into four categories. And of course, I wouldn't bore you with what you know. And uh, to transit from that era to, to where we are today, has been a very painful journey. We made tremendous uh, strides. We made great achievements, but at the same time, uh, the difficulties we were confronted with, particularly in relation to the youth. Um, <clears throat> as I've said before to Sophie, that uh, unemployed youth in any country is a ticking time bomb. And I think uh, the fact that uh, we, we have the parliament we have today is a consequence of, of the problems I am talking about. It was easy to hoist the flag of freedom and say we were free at last. But then uh, the economy still remained in the hands of the few. And the most difficult part has actually been transition transformation. Um, we didn't realize how difficult it would be to get back our land because it was owned 
by the people who had oppressed us all those years and uh, we had had such a violent history that we wanted to put an end uh, to the armed struggle, difficult as it was, and we were not going to do uh, land grab. We were going to um, see to it that we passed legislation that saw to it that uh, we got our land back uh, transitionally and amicably. But uh, as you would know, the willing seller, willing buyer uh, policy has not worked as much as uh, many other policies have worked. We have passed a lot of le legislation trying to transform South Africa um, amicably. But uh, of course, uh, the masses down there uh, do not necessarily bother to think of the fact that it cannot be done overnight. And for a people who had been oppressed for so many years, uh, you can't blame them for having been impatient with the leadership. And you can't blame them when they wonder uh, whether this is the South Africa they fought for. And unfortunately, because of our history of our country, the pace is not as much as we would have wanted it to be, the pace of transformation. Mama, you spoke about Parliament. When we look at what's happening currently in Parliament, we saw the incidents, you know, when uh, during the session where there was kind of uh, some behavior that are not of... Uh, that should be displayed by leaders. Looking at Parliament currently, what are your comments? Well, I think uh, the leadership of our generation, although there are very few of us left now, um, we are bleeding. Uh, South Africa is hemorrhaging. Never in our dreams did we imagine that uh, Parliament uh, would be reduced to what we see today. Uh, no matter how angry, how angry we are at each other, there is no way that uh, we can disrespect each other the way we did in Parliament. And I don't think there is a single South African that is proud of what is going on in Parliament. As a matter of fact, I think uh, our generation is are very ashamed of how the extent to which uh, Parliament has degenerated because uh, it is an extreme challenge uh, to our forebears and those who lead the country today. I don't think there's anyone who applauds what happens in Parliament today. And then there's no guarantee that uh, we are going to see uh, any improvement. We, we hold our breath each time the doors of Parliament open because we just never know what's going to happen, what next will happen. And uh, the rules of Parliament are flouted uh, every day and uh, something has gone terribly wrong. And uh, the, the, the senior leadership ought to introspect, and I think the African National Congress needs to go back to the drawing board and we introspect and, and find out where have we gone so wrong. Mama, when you look at the senior leadership, we do have senior leadership, though very few, but at times when the leadership wants to help, and then there's suspicion, you know, how do we deal with that? How do we ensure that we tap into this resource? I do not uh, possess a magic wand uh, which can uh, guide the country as such. I think it goes back to the collectivity of, of the leadership uh, I was talking about earlier. Surely there are still a few of us, the elders, uh, in the African National Congress, and I think it is our responsibility to come together 
and uh, find out where we've gone so wrong. What has happened to the leadership of the Lutulis, of the Tambos, of the Chris Hanis, uh, you, you name them, of the Sisulus, the Tumanokwes, the Lillian Goyes, the Helen Josephs. Where is that leadership? I, I cannot tell you uh, as I'm sitting here what has happened to us. Why have we failed to, to build that kind of leadership that would have maintained the status quo? Of our country. Um, um, just a few weeks ago, we heard from President Jacob Zuma talking about an ANC that is in crisis. Would you share that view? Oh, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> I admire him for admitting that uh, uh, we have uh, a crisis in the country. And I think it is very big of him, as president of the country, to acknowledge that. Uh, the ANC is in crisis. This statement has been made before by uh, the Secretary General of, of the ANC. It's just that these statements <coughs> get made and um, they don't seem to have any impact and you don't get the analysts analyzing those people who've designated themselves, who've given themselves those positions of analyzing the political situation in the country. You don't get them assisting uh, the country in analyzing uh, those sorts of statements when a, a, a Secretary General of uh, the ANC, a ruling party, stands up and says, the African National Congress is imploding. He has said that before. And there didn't seem to be a follow-up to that statement. And I think if there had been a follow-up, a serious follow-up to that statement, we probably wouldn't be where we are today. There's a tendency to just make those statements and um, they don't seem to result in us a going back to the drawing board each time such comments are made. But I admire the fact that uh, we have come out of the culture of being very defensive. There was a time where when you, as a matter of fact, or even when you were a, a senior member of the ANC, and you made comments of that sort outside of Lutuli House, you were regarded as a counter-revolutionary. I think we have matured a great deal for the president to actually admit that the ANC is in crisis. And I hope that attitude continues because then, in that case, we will be able to, to look at ourselves and, and uh, revisit those policies and perhaps uh, uh, just go and investigate where we went wrong. You let the struggle, but you also... All right, that's uh, the last ever media interview that Winnie Madigazela Mandela gave uh, to the media, and it was with uh, the SABC's uh, acting, uh, foreign ed acting political editor and foreign editor, Sophie Mkwena, as well as Mahlatse Gallins, who was uh, the deputy radio political editor at the time. And uh, we'll return to that interview uh, in a short while, because uh, we have on the line now...